Welcome to the United Church of Two Harbors. I'm Pastor Paula, pastor here at United. And, you know, today is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are all together here worshiping so that we bring your word and we hear your word and we be your word. So come, let's worship together. Hello, Hello United. United. It's Emily this week, and I have Mason with me. Hi. <laughs> so, for our lesson this week, I have these. Mason, what do we have? Starburst. Starburst. He was super excited to do this lesson with me, as you can tell, because why, Mason? Starburst. Starburst. He loves Starburst. <laughs> now, Starburst come in different flavors. This is just the original pack, so it has uh, orange, pink, red, and yellow, but you can get the tropical packs, which have purple and greens and blues and all kinds of weird colors. But Mason, do you have a favorite out of these colors? I like the pink one. He likes the pink. You know, most people don't actually like the yellow Starbursts, but I kind of do. I kind of think, they're probably not my favorite, but I really like them. And so it's kind of funny to think of Starbursts or suckers or different flavors of different things because kids always choose their favorite, right? They automatically go to their favorite one and they don't want anything other than that. But what if you end up with something that you don't want, right? Or say sometimes we are playing on a sports team and we really wanted to be the first base kid and we ended up being the third base person. And so we didn't actually get to be what we wanted to be. We weren't chosen for the spot that we were wanna be. Um, and so how does that make you feel if you don't get what you want, Mason? Sometimes I don't care and sometimes I am like, don't like it. Sometimes you don't like it, right? Cause it's not what you wanted. You wish you would have had something that you really did want, right? Um, and so did you know that in those times when maybe we're not feeling like we got what we wanted or we didn't get our way and we're sad and we might feel like we're kind of alone? Are we always alone? No. We're never alone. Who is always with us? God. God. And Jesus and God don't ever want us to be left out. They don't ever want us to be the yellow starburst that nobody wants because he wants us no matter what right? And so I want us to think about that and love each other just as God has loved us. And Mason, now you can enjoy your pink starburst. Starburst. We'll talk to you again next week, United. Bye-bye. Bye.
Acts 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. And all the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Can he? Then he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay on for a few days. Our New Testament scripture passage today comes from the Gospel of John. Chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So ends the reading of God's Word. We have heard these words so many times, and because of that, sometimes these familiar passages, they just roll right off of us. We like the sound of them, and they're very comforting, but we may not find a need to actually sit and, and ponder those words, or, or, or to study them in such a way that they make an impact on our behavior or our way of thinking. Okay, so with that in mind, let's break that down a little bit um, and take a, a really a much closer look at that scripture passage, shall we? To abide. It means to stay, to remain, to continue in place, to endure to remain firm. And then that word joy. Joy in this gospel scripture usually means to rejoice or, or delight in our salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we take that into account, let's see what this passage sounds like then. As a father has loved me, so I have loved you. Endure in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain firm and stay in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain firm in his love. I have said these things to you so that my delight in your salvation may be in you and that your delight in your salvation may be complete." Suddenly, that whole passage appears to be very personal, doesn't it? We are to remain dedicated and constant in our love for God, and, and we are to live in a state of delight. That most likely means that we are to be an unending example of the love of God as shown in Jesus Christ and, and that we must allow ourselves to be saturated with this godly love. So here's a question. How do we even know what that kind of love looks like? Well, looking to Christ, what we observe is a, a wondrous love that is concerned about others. It allows genuine space for others to be in. And this love is offered without reservation. It's a love that can only be perfected over a lifetime of living and practicing it. It's a love that is deeply interwoven into the very fabric of our, of our very beings. Now this passage from the book of Acts gives us a glimpse of how we begin to cultivate that love. First though, we need to um, take a few steps back so that the whole story fits together. 
So in the beginning of chapter 10 in the book of Acts, we meet Cornelius. Cornelius is a, a Roman army officer. He's a, a very devout man who feared and loved God. And, and although he was not a Jew, he practiced acts of Jewish piety like almsgiving and um, prayer and generosity to others. And then one day, an angel appeared to him and tells him that God has heard his prayers and that he, Cornelius, is to send for a man by the name of Peter, who is staying with Simon the Tanner in the city of Joppa. Now, in the meantime, Peter, who is staying with Simon, also has a vision that the heavens open up and a great sheet-like object is lowered to the ground. I, I always think of it as a, a gi gigantic white tablecloth that floats down from the sky. And on that sheet, on that tablecloth, are all kinds of birds and creatures and reptiles. And then a voice tells Peter to kill and eat. Peter is appalled, and he replies that he has never, ever eaten anything profane or unclean. Now, this exact scene happens three separate times, and each time Peter replies with the same response. Then Cornelius's man, men arrive at Simon's house, and Peter welcomes them. He gives them lodging, and then he leaves with them the next day to go to Cornelius' home. As the story unfolds, Peter begins to realize that this visit is a part of that divine revelation that he had experienced earlier. And the nature of that revelation has to do with Peter's understanding of the full spectrum of salvation he comes to the understanding that while salvation is a gift from God to the Jews, it also includes non-Jews, and that they are to be included in this new Israel of God. God's love is made crystal clear. What God requires of Peter and will require of Peter going forward is that Peter is to abide. He is to remain constant. He is to remain constant in the delight, in the salvation of the Lord, and that he is to be the one to take that good news to Jerusalem. Peter begins to realize that God shows no favoritism, and that God does not discriminate. God is a God of justice and mercy. What we read in the book of Acts tells us clearly that the Christian work, that this ministry that we have before us today is to imitate God, and therefore we are to be in the ministry of extravagant generosity. We are to adopt full inclusion and to be willing to share the table. Not only that, but we are to also accept hospitality. And we are to listen and treasure others' stories. Our ministry is to be that we abide in God's love. And that we tell the story of salvation so that as we grow in our faith and ministry, that we will live without fear. We are to remain steadfast in the love of God. And we are to imitate Peter and Cornelius. We are to find great delight and joy in the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to share that love and joy. As we lean into this commandment, we are to do it without fear. And it is clear that this is what makes us the church. So how about if we make that so? Amen? 
Our song of response is, Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our God of love and grace, we are here because you have called us. You call us by name and we respond as best we can. We are far from perfect, as you well know, yet you love us still and we trust you. You reach out to us with compassion and care like a mother comforting her child. Indeed, on this day in which our culture celebrates mothers, we recognize the ways your love has made known through the mystery and wonder of motherhood. We are grateful for caring mothers and loving children. We are mindful of women who long to be mothers but are not or cannot. We pray for those who have lost their mothers and miss them. We lift up those who have difficult relationships with their mothers and mothers who are estranged from their children. We pray for mothers who cannot or will not do what mothers need to do. For all of these realities, joyous, difficult, and complicated, we give you thanks and ask for your blessings, O God. Holy God, of all of these things that remind us of the dynamic nature of your kingdom, as the Spirit moves through our lives in unpredictable ways, Sometimes we feel lost and unbalanced, but through it all, we trust your transforming love and your abiding presence. Today, we lift up in prayer Jean Sickink, who is hospitalized with COVID and is, is ill with pneumonia. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up Mary Jo Lund's family, Mary Jo passed away Thursday night, and we lift Kathy Lindahl and the rest of her family in prayer as they grieve Mary Jo's passing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up prayers of joy for Natalie Bothwell's brother-in-law, Chris, who after many weeks in the hospital is with COVID is now on his way home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for those who will be making some very difficult medical decisions in the near future. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So hear us now as we pray for our ever-changing world and the coming of your kingdom. As Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now return to the Lord the many blessings that we have received. Please take a few moments to put your offering in an envelope and either drop it off at the United Church or mail it or, or go on our website and click the donate button. Thank you. Please join me in our offering prayer. With your love, loving Lord, help us to love your world. With your nourishment, help us to feed your world. With your guidance, help us care for your world. With these gifts, bring new life where it is needed most. Amen. You have been chosen to go into this world with the message of God's love. Bear fruit of hope, joy, peace, and justice with all whom you meet. May God's peace be with you all. Amen. Our sending song is Forward Through the Ages. Oh. 